Our last video talked about the altcoins that you can buy because of its huge potential. However, buying recklessly can cause you to lose too much. Before you invest in crypto or anything else, it is first important to know their nature. It is also vital to have an idea on the status quo of the things that you are investing in. It would give you an idea whether the climate or market is really profitable or not. Not knowing these things can make you lose money. It would be a careless mistake to not check the market before putting your money in. Thank you for watching Diversified Streams, your go-to YouTube channel for all things crypto and finance. Be sure to check out our community post about these subjects. We are curious to know your opinions on these matters. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the latest news and tips related to crypto. And make sure to keep your notifications on so you'll be updated with our latest videos. We frequently post so you wouldn't want to miss them. In today's video, we will be talking about the latest news that you should know before investing in any altcoins. I will explain to you how this news affects the crypto market. We have a lot to talk about, so let us now proceed. Let us start with the news about ETH. Since September 11, rich whale addresses on Ethereum owning 1 million or more ETH have contributed 3.5 million additional coins altogether. This has added another 14% to their total bags. There are 132 such addresses in use right now. This figure demonstrates that these wealthy whales have recently increased their stack since the ETH merging. Regardless of whether this statistic is bullish or bearish, the information shown here won't reveal if these addresses belong to billionaire whales or are most likely exchanges. This makes logical sense given that the price of ETH has increased since the ETH merging because people are putting their coins up for sale on exchanges. The decline and stagnation in the price of Ethereum makes some sense. But the most recent Bitcoin statistic shows a total different picture. Yesterday, a huge influx of Bitcoins left exchanges. With almost 40,000 Bitcoin, it is the highest day total in the previous four months. Coin availability on exchanges is now down 8.48%. Simply said, this indicates that it reduces the likelihood of a future sell-off. Yes. Also, most of the time in order to sell, you must transfer coins on exchanges. If more coins are now being removed, that is a bullish indicator. So the graph of Bitcoin over the previous six months is shown above. The price of Bitcoin has only decreased over the past six months. However, if you look at the yellow, you can also see that BTC is also demonstrably heading downward on exchanges, with the biggest outflow in several months occurring once more on October 18. What does this mean for us cryptocurrency owners? The more this declines, the more the sell pressure is reduced. In the latter stages of a bear market, we observe numbers like these. More and more people are becoming less interested in selling Bitcoin as its prices declines. It does not imply that the short-term decline is still impossible. Nobody has access to future events. However, it does indicate that fewer and fewer people are currently eager to sell. That is fascinating. Currently, those are the biggest news involving two of the most popular crypto coins. Now, I just want to ask you if you're also holding those coins. Which do you prefer more? BTC or ETH. And since this is about altcoin, do you have any altcoin preference? Let us know your thoughts by writing them in the comments below. And while you're at it, do us a favor by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. That contrasts with several of these altcoins though. On October 24, insiders and early investors will be able to access about 8% of the entire Axie supply for Axie Infinity. This is a component of their vesting schedule. To be really explicit, when the vesting period ends in a few days, about 21.5 million tokens or approximately 8% of the total supply will become available. What is a vesting period exactly? Early investors and insiders who cannot immediately cash out are forced to keep their investments for a minimum period of time throughout a vesting period. Holdings become unlocked at the end of the vesting term, allowing investors to sell. But it doesn't necessarily guarantee they'll sell. It just indicates that they have been kept in custody thus long. Many individuals cash out, maybe 10% or 50% of it, but not all of it. They are limited to that choice. And exactly who are these insiders? Silken and Locks claims that the members of the development team, project advisors, and early buyers in a private cell will receive over half of the Axie tokens that will shortly be unlocked. Theoretically, these holders could elect to sell tokens in order to realize profits. So now the tokens will be unlocked for half of the users. The remaining half, or roughly 11 million tokens, will be used for ecosystem funding. 
play-to-earn prizes and future staking payouts. Leadership has stated that these tokens would not be sent into circulation right away. Therefore, around half will be put to use as future staking rewards and not immediately sold on the market. Time will tell about the other half. The next news concerns ETH again. This will be significant for Ethereum. The launch of the ETH testnet signals the start of the Shanghai upgrade. This is what Ethereum will do after a successful integration, so to speak. A pre-Shanghai testnet dubbed Shangdong, which will be used as a testing ground for many EIPS, Ethereum Improvement Protocols, was launched. According to an announcement by the Ethereum Foundation on Friday, what then will these improvements be? When exactly is this taking place? Shanghai is anticipated to debut no later than September 2023. However, the ETH core developers have not yet settled on a precise timetable. As a result, we are unsure of the precise EIP basket that will be included of the Shanghai upgrade. EIP 4895, which would enable people and organizations to withdraw Ethereum they have staked, is arguably the largest ticket item that is most likely to be included in Shanghai. Post-merge, individuals are currently able to stake their ETH in ETH 2.0 contract and deposit their ETH. People cannot withdraw at this time. This take or deposited ETH cannot be moved at this time. That would alter with this EIP. It appears that this will happen at the earliest in a year. Looking at the Voyager users right now, 72% of Voyager subscribers' money might be reimbursed under the FTX recovery plan. Thus, we are aware that Voyager became insolvent. The users never received their money back after they filed for bankruptcy. It seems like FTX is presenting a recovery strategy. According to Bloomberg, this is true. The judge is the only thing keeping it in place at the moment. However, this transaction cannot be finalized until U.S. bankruptcy judge Michael Lee Wiles accepts the bankruptcy settlement plan for Voyager. It might allegedly be taken into account in December. So close but so far in fact. Ideally, this happens prior to December. Wiles required that Voyager add the so-called fiduciary out, a customer bankruptcy language that enables the business under corporate action to consider greater bids before a sale is pronounced final before finalizing this agreement. There is yet hope for those who place their money in Voyager. The Terra news comes next. Do Kwon, a co-founder of Terra, claims he is still at his home. He hasn't been arrested, so I assume. He is still promoting a recent edition of Lawrence Podcast, in fact. He asserts that Terra was a catastrophic market failure, not a con. He still desires to construct more things. He thinks that decentralized algorithmic stablecoins are necessary. The ego is really in the sky, because investing in cryptocurrencies is quite dangerous as a whole. For us, the problem wasn't so much that the project failed as it was, that there was a risk involved. The problem back then was how Do Kwon was encouraging people to cling onto their trust in this initiative, even though it was only a few days away from collapse by tweeting that everything was fine when it was obviously collapsing. And that is it for today's video. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. As always, if you did, please show us some love and support by giving this video a big thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. And make sure to keep your notifications on so you will be updated whenever we post new videos on all things related to crypto. This has been Diversified Streams. Thank you so much for tuning in, and see you in our next video.